Thanks, Danica. And they always say um, hire people that are smarter and better than you. And thanks, thanks for showing me up, Danica. It's been great. Um, from my point of view, it's great to be at this conference. And thanks to Danica and Evie for the opportunity. Um, let's be honest, this is a copper conference. Five out of eight of these presentations have been copper. No more secret handshakes, boys. No more hiding in the shadows. We're out there, we're loud and proud. We're talking about copper. It has been a, an interesting couple of years in the market um, for us, um, for, the, for us at Castile. The important message that we need to get out to people is that yes, we are, we are producing downstream critical and precious, precious minerals. We are copper and gold, cobalt and magnetite, all coming from one mine, which is in the Northern Territory, and it's an IOCG, which are typically and historically some of the richest mines in the world. So it's, our project has an NPV of 450 mil on historic prices, much lower than where they are now, and I'll talk a bit about that. Importantly, we are downstream. This is our big differentiator. We'll be producing copper cathode in Australia, obviously gold doro, which will go to the mint, cobalt sulphate in Australia, and a 96.5% magnetite product, which can be used in coal cleansing. All produced in Australia, and we'll see why that leads into my second, I guess the second message I want to get across, we're getting enormous support from federal and state governments, and that'll be culminated in um, Minister Madeleine King, who's the Minister for Resources, as you would know, and also Northern Australia, coming out to site to see what we are doing and to see how we are doing it. Uh, just quickly on the deposit itself, extremely high grade. It speaks for itself, 30 metres at an ounce, seven metres at four ounces per tonne of gold. And then the copper, just a couple down there, 21 metres at 7% and uh, 40 metres at 4%, whatever you like. These are extremely typical of grades in the Northern Territory, in uh, around Tennant Creek. Extremely high grade, and it's what allows us to make so much money out of this thing. Obviously, the IRR is around 46%, uh, and a little higher when you start looking at some of the price moves. I'm not for a moment saying that I think uh, both gold and copper will move up together in this relationship. It's quite a unique time in history, as everyone knows. We are. Uh, we love gold, we absolutely love it, but we're getting financed because of the fact that we're going to be producing downstream copper, cobalt and the magnetite. Do not get me wrong, I love gold. So, actually I should have gone back there, but um, um, the news that Danica was talking about was that we've just received a major project status from the Northern Territory Government, which basically opens the vault to this um, funding that our panellists were talking about earlier. And I, it's, it seems they were talking our story, the panellists, about how you get things funded and um, what are the possibilities once you have them funded and that's what I want to get across today. So that should be the video, it doesn't like it's worked. I'll press that, maybe it has. Okay, so I'll just quickly cover off a just 90 second video on the project itself and then how we're going to fund it and then where we're taking it. So we're right in the middle of uh, the Northern Territory, we've got a thousand square kilometres of tenement, um, we, tenements I should say. We've drilled, uh, we've done six programs historically and come up with four discoveries, but the flagship project that you've just seen up there is the Rover One project, which some people in the, in the crowd may know, came out of West Gold. It's, it's as I say, extremely high grade, very typical of IOCG, IOCG deposits in the area. We've um, done 15 kilometres of drilling on it. Previous owners have done 75 kilometres. It's well drilled out, very uh, known very, we know the deposit very well plenty more opportunity at depth than to the east and um, as I say we'll be doing about 500,000 tonnes per annum of mining and processing and I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what we produce but again we have organised and, and specifically done this project for profitability. How much money can we make out of this? Yes, how big can we make it eventually and what's the expansion potential but how much money can we make out of it? We are determined to get every single dollar out of every single ton that we mine and hence that prompted the uh, the downstream processing which is now for us in such a great position with the government. Makes great money, 46% IRR at current prices, that IRR is about 57% and the MPV is about 640 million just to give you an idea of the leverage. Again the key is downstream processing oxidation, extremely amenable to this form of processing it only spends 60 minutes in the autoclave, and that is that downstream processing that um, a couple of the other copper guys are going to be going down that pathway as well. So this is the proposed plant layout, quite simple, 500,000 tonnes per annum, completely modular, and obviously um, we'll, we'll be picking up um, any, any gravity gold, any loose gold, but again, 
93% um, recovery in gold, about 96 in copper, and producing these great products. So we only mine for the copper and the gold, but the cobalt and the magnetite come along as a result of it being iron oxide copper gold. So on an annual basis, we do about 225 million in revenue. That's now about 270, 280 in current prices. Uh, 30,000 ounces of gold, 7,000 tonnes of copper, 300 tonnes only of cobalt, and 75,000 tonnes of magnetite. So that's us, and um, we are finding, as I said, we originally did this thinking that um, there'd be a great inverse relationship between the copper and the gold, but they're both running at the moment, so good for us. Right. Um, that sort of leads me to where there was a, quite, a question, quite a few questions on the panel. How do you fund these things? Um, and uh, historically, when I've been involved in situations like this, it's like, who needs your product? And, um, what, and, and we're looking for a big brother. We're looking for that partner that will come in, as well as I'm more or less taking government funding here for granted, um, in that there's the, the uh, NAIP $5 billion dollars is the critical minerals facility there. Um, that $440 million in infrastructure funding is going to put around an, spend about 80 to $100 million in putting infrastructure in Tennant Creek that we can lob, hopefully lob our plant on top of, which takes 60 to 70 off of our, um, our capex requirement. So these critical minerals funds, um, as I said, Madeline King will be coming out to site. She loves what we're doing because we are basically spruiking the same story that they're spruiking. Produce it here in Australia. We're producing cathode in Australia and they'll support us as a result. So from our point of view, uh, it makes it pretty simple to now go, right, well, who else do we need? And I said, so putting the government funding aside, and you've seen the Arrow Fuhrer example, and they've received 800 million in government funding through NAIF, through the Critical Minerals Facility and through um, the EFA, um, on a project that runs at about you know, mid-teens in the desert IRR. So it is about pushing this downstream processing capability in Australia and they've got 1.4 billion to raise, and the government's handed them 800 million. Um, Jenna Reinhardt's involved in that one. She's also involved in Lion Town. They've got 230 billion. So, um, hopefully, if I can't convince Jenna to uh, adopt me, we'll have to go through the process ourselves. So, it's it's we are very lucky in that regard. So, clearly, that the link now is right. Who's that big partner? Historically, I've brought in large partners. It's what we do, and the the, the massive opportunity is that there is now. Uh, 30,000 tonnes of, sorry, big belt, 30 million tonnes of gold and copper sitting in Tennant Creek, which is stranded. So if we can open up the pathway, and obviously I can't talk about other companies and their assets, but if we can op open up the pathway, it provides an enormous opportunity up there uh, in, in, for the entire region. And obviously the fact that we are the only company up there with reserves, we are the ones that can start the whole process. So. That's where I'm seeing us bid in, and obviously um, we'd like to bring um, a large investor-style brother along the way, and um, we're working, obviously working on that now. Government's put their hand up, Madeline King's coming out to site, so I did say to her, I hope that, hope that she can bring a checkbook. But um, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm um, happy to have a cut-off, because if you still around.